Hello, everybody. I'm uh, John Klein. I'm here to give a little uh, talk on uh, environmental transportation and the state of uh, transportation in China. Uh, I was invited by the Canadian uh, College Students Union to, to give this talk. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, your questions after. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of you are here for the, the talk, and I'm not just going to be interrupting your homework and uh, making your lunch uh, noisy. Uh, Long ago, I got my uh, computer science degree at uh, Campaign College, uh, a co-op degree, and uh, I never imagined at the time that I'd wind up the uh, president of a different kind of co-op, the uh, Regina Car Share Cooperative. Uh, I didn't even know that car sharing was a thing. Uh, I'd heard of carpooling, of course, but they're different. It wasn't until I returned to work at the U of R um, years later that I got an email about a group of people holding a potluck supper in Regina to discuss forming a car share. And I thought that sounded like maybe a good way to use a car without the unpleasantries of maintaining one. A few years later, I was chosen to help guide a remarkable group of volunteers to make organized car sharing possible in our city, as it is in almost every other Canadian uh, major city in American city today. And why am I interested in transportation? Well, I'm interested in nearly everything, but where curiosity meets reality is on our streets. And nearly everyone in the world has a daily need to move about the farm, the town, or the city they live at. So modes of transportation are essential to how and where we live. If transportation isn't timely or fun, then people don't enjoy where they live as much as they should. I don't think car repair is fun, and I know there's exceptions in the crowd, but uh, I feel like dealing with SGI after an accident is about the worst thing that could administratively happen to somebody, uh, short of being charged with a crime. <laughs> so I've set out to make transportation both timely and fun for myself, and it just so happens to get that accomplished, I need to make it that way for the people around me too, in order to be successful. Another big reason I'm interested in transportation uh, improvement is that it's a major contributor to air pollution and climate change. These aren't small or easy problems to solve, but our little daily actions collectively point our society in either the right or wrong direction. Right now, Regina is unquestionably pointed in the wrong direction, and among our collective actions pointing us there is how we get around every day. Since public talks are always more fun with interaction, I think so anyway, because otherwise they tend to get sleepy, especially if the speaker has a monotone voice like mine. How many people today in the crowd got to university by themselves in a motor vehicle? Okay. Uh, how many people got here uh, by a uh, carpool? Okay, a few people. Uh, how many got to the school uh, by taking the bus? Okay, I just saw one hand there. And how many people bike or walk? Okay, so uh, as you can see, most people that answered said they drove. And what are the reasons for taking a car, even though a lot of us would prefer not to have the, uh, the car create some of the negative aspects that it does? Uh, like the air pollution that it can cause and the uh, time that it takes to maintain uh, pollution uh, or the, uh, the parking and all this, the little annoyances that, that make a car not so fun. Uh, but what is it about cars that uh, you refer to? Is it their convenience, uh, their fun possibilities, uh, and or a lack of effective alternatives or is it just a habit that we've always done it that way? And I think there's many ways that, that we can make other modes of transportation that are not single occupant cars, the fun and convenient habit forming alternatives that we can get into. I'm going to start off with uh, bicycles. Uh, right now, of course, the Virginia is not known for being a hotbed of cycling culture, uh, but that's changing uh, to some degree. I, I see cycling groups are popping up more often. There's the Boston of three wheelers and uh, Bike Regina, which is formerly known as Bike to Work Regina. And they're providing the city with uh, lots of feedback through the official community plan known as Design Regina. This uh, winter, uh, Bike Regina board member helped uh, clear multi-use pathways that were totally blocked by snow drifts, simply by letting City Hall know that there's a demand among cyclists for these off-road paths to be available 
year round. There's presently a vast network of both on street and off street cycling infrastructure in Quebec, yet most of it's not well connected to each other. Say, if you've driven down West Canada Parkway just over here, and you get to just before the Broad Street Bridge, you might recognize a sign that says bike lane ends. Well, when I see it, I imagine a cyclist pedaling along, getting to the bike lane, and then popping out of existence, and only to pop back into existence on the other side of the bridge. And this is the sort of logical thought process that the person who designed the street bike lane must have had to go through. The only other possibility is that they expected the cyclist going 30 kilometers an hour to join vehicle traffic decelerating from 70 kilometers an hour to 50, while the two motor vehicle lanes narrow down to a lane and a half in winter, not leaving any room for the cyclist, of course, except in the way of a car that wants to go 20 kilometers an hour faster. This sort of thoughtless, car-centric street design encourages only fair weather cyclists, or encourages fair weather cyclists rather, to make good use of their car instead of trying to bike. Regina presently has mostly only fearless cyclists, I'd say, who are willing really and able to intermingle on the streets with cars, trucks, and buses. This sort of rider doesn't really describe most people, however, it only describes me. Uh, maybe in this room, unless there's somebody else who's a fearless cyclist here. And uh, without a street design that makes a separate or visibly different space for bikes and cars, it's really not possible to convince a large number of people to use by bike and make it their primary vehicle. The next mode of transportation I'll talk a little bit about is car sharing. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a way to share vehicles that are owned by a business through an online booking system and a self-serve car rental model. The end result is supposed to mean that you can book time in a car from your smartphone and then you go about your driving task, you fill up the car if the tank is under half full and return the car before your book time runs out so the next person with the booking can use it. The fuel, the insurance, the repairs, everything nobody likes about a car is paid for collectively. So your monthly bill represents the total cost of using the car for the time that you book it and the distance you drive it. People who don't drive more than about 12,000 kilometers a year can save thousands of dollars a year by sharing a car instead of owning one for private use. Regina's had a car share, the Regina Car Share Co-op, since 2009, and I'm the president of that co-op, and it's still one of the smaller ones in Canada with only one shared car. There's more than 30 drivers who use that for car, however, and it isn't even as efficient as uh, our car shares can be even more efficient than that, saying uh, American uh, car shares tend to average about 50 uh, people per car. So that's uh, you know, 20 more people crammed into the car uh, at the time of the day. And this is why uh, one shared car is estimated to replace between 8 to 13 parked cars. So imagine how big a parking space you need for a dozen vehicles. And then you could reassign that space for some other purpose. Uh, hopefully those sort of possibilities of real estate excite you. If not, you're probably not a group of many people like I am. And the next uh, issue that we need to talk about in regards to urban transportation is uh, definitely to do with uh, public transit. I've lived in uh, several cities across Saskatchewan and small towns and, and uh, also in Ottawa. And I've used buses to travel to most provinces and, and to two dozen states in the United States. And Regina doesn't have the most inconvenient transit system of views, but it's close. And it doesn't surprise people when they typically see buses that are nearly empty at random times in the day. There's several reasons for this. But one of the reasons is urban sprawl of our city design. Uh, Regina it has subdivisions that virtually empty out during the daytime and then fill back up again in the evening as tens of thousands of people commute downtown and to the university. Without having a neighborhood designed to meet mixed purposes of residential housing and commercial businesses and recreation opportunities, transit cannot be cheaply provided. Or rather, it can be cheap, but it can also be convenient. Bus stop times in Regina tend to be spaced at intervals of about half hours, or on Sundays, times after 9 p.m. intervals of one hour. I don't know about you, but if I was told 
that I could only get into my car on the hour, I'd find it pretty inconvenient. You'd have to plan whether to be very early or very late when arriving at your scheduled destination. With that kind of restriction on car use, you'd see people seeking another way to get around on their own terms. And this is why many people don't consider using the bus and instead opt for purchasing a car, which costs them on average 8,000 bucks a year to own and completely maintain. So fuel, insurance, uh, car loan, tires, accidents, etc. Parking, of course. And Regina, we've chosen to make transit cheap over convenience. And we're getting what we pay for, and we're steering people up toward automobile purchasing instead. So how do we get a different transportation system? Now that we've sort of got a picture of what it is right now, and maybe that's not working as well as it could be. What will we change so that we can accommodate people who don't feel comfortable with the car is king style of city? We have to make some decisions based upon where we expect people like us to live and where we will work in the play. If we were to spend more and more money on buying buses opposed to subsidizing parking to keep parking artificially cheaper than its real estate value is, we'd see increased transit drivers at bought, I think. Uh, more buses would mean more frequent stop times, so you, again, you're not having to decide when to leave your party or when to get to work really early or late. And uh, that means that uh, we have more direct and more intuitive routes also. Uh, so if you can predict where you'll end up by getting onto a bus based on what side of the street that you get onto it. And all your, if you get on, on the uh, east side of Albert Street, you're going to be heading north and you'll probably stay on Albert Street. And it should be as easy as that to predict where you're going to end up when you get on the bus. You shouldn't need a pocket computer to calculate the route for you in a city that's grid-like and laid out pretty well as, uh, as Regina, with no river cutting through it except for the, the, the creek. So, parkades, uh, to sort of fill in some more information about, uh, about parking infrastructure costs, parkades can cost $33,000 every stall that built at the U of R. Parking in Los Angeles, I valued it two years ago, was $31,000 a stall. So, parking in the parkade here to construct it is making parking that's more valuable than street parking in uh, Los Angeles, or maybe that's part in Los Angeles uh, per stall. You know. And the parking spots then are more valuable than the cars that are being put into them. But have you ever seen free parking? But have you ever seen a free car? So we're giving away parking when it's actually more valuable than the cars that, that are, are stopping the spots. And it's leading to uh, urban sprawl. Uh, especially in uh, big box stores or zones where there's not even sidewalks and bike lanes for the residential people living near these stores to get to them. There's no you ever tried walking uh, from London Drugs to you know, Walmart in that parking lot, but it's, you know, it's ridiculous to try it because uh, you feel like you're walking through, you are only walking through parking lots. There's no sidewalks. And it's, I, I call it basically an urban wasteland because it's, it's dangerous for pedestrians. You're expected to have a car, like you should be able to drive those three blocks or there's something wrong with you. These sort of city design issues are essential to how transportation uh, shakes out for a given city. That's one of the big reasons why I got involved in the uh, Civic Election and why I'm still actively involved in bringing ideas to City Council about how we can make uh, progress and how people get around and find and healthier modes of transportation. I've uh, seen a dramatic increase in the number of people actively involved with Bike Regina these past few months. And the car share co-op is picking up new members, even with our static number of one vehicle. And still manage to keep members happy with uh, the availability, so when they go to book it, it's usually still when available when they want it, which is good for the, the customers. And uh, the transit system is uh, promising some route improvements for Sundays where they're going to cancel the alternative uh, uh, route map that you had to learn a different route map on Sundays as opposed to the rest of the week. We're going to scrap that uh, failed idea that they brought in a few years ago. So that'll, I think, improve.
through things that people trying to get around on uh, every day of the week just to get on the bus. And they'll have an express money on uh, or express sensible route on Albert Street and Victoria Avenue. And I've even heard a rumor that there might be uh, free express routes for a short time to just entice people into trying to use it a bit. And give it a try. Lots of people end up liking the bus after they get on it because they, they get to read and uh, and uh, do other things instead of you know be frustrated with the traffic. And if uh, you get into a traffic accident on the bus, which doesn't happen very often, uh, because like, in two, 2011 the uh, uh, buses were involved in about 32 accidents, and cars overall were involved in Regina over 5,000 accidents. And the buses are on the road for 18 hours a day. So they're remarkably safe, and you don't really worry when you're on the bus about getting into a fender bender because the other vehicle will lose. So, as I mentioned earlier, it's possible to make big changes by simply letting City Hall know that you'd like a little action to make your walk or your run or your bike or carpooling experience a little bit easier. If you're thinking something isn't right with the Venice roads, you don't have to stay silent. You should let your city councillor or service for Venice know about it. If it's something really big, write your MLA and your MP also. When politicians see that letter and phone calls are coming in, and about an issue that uh, there's much better chance they're going to take steps to fix the shortcoming than if you just remain silent. If you've been feeling out, left out about how your city works, be idle no more, and idle your car no more too. There are friendly groups looking for your support, and you can have a lot of fun in the journey. Remember, it's not just where you're going, it's how you get there that counts. And once again, for those who wandered in late, I'm John Klein, and uh, those were some of my comments on the state of uh, Regina transportation, and I'd like to take some questions if you have any about it. I got a few suggested topics uh, about where the future of transportation may be going, including uh, self-driving cars, which uh, sound futuristic, but they're already here in places, uh, especially cars with assist computer-assisted systems to assist with braking uh, to avoid collisions. Uh, there's also the possibility we can combine uh, payment systems like on our bus with uh, other uh, things like cab and car sharing. Uh, there's other sort of app systems like Uber Cab, where you order a cab through your smartphone, just catches a, um, a qualified but more independently owned uh, cab driver to you. Uh, there's also Uber computer car sharing, where some of your neighbors might decide to share their cars instead of a business owning them, they maintain ownership, but their car time is booked out for uh, people booking their car through the internet they can make a little bit of money for sharing the car that way. And do I have any questions? Sure. Stop. Step, step up to here and look a little bit more so I can take a You can even show the mic if you want. with some of the logistic aspects of it. 
uh, for the city providing more parking for bicycles at workplaces or uh, encouraging workplaces through incentives would be maybe a good way to, to get that. Uh, make sure that there's facilities present, uh, like showers at workplaces. New York is not a lot. It's really encouraged cycling culture there. Um, as far as like buses, again, uh, maybe hopefully the mayor or as far as